This morning's coffee with us with Doogie and Porter. And a satellite interview is furnished by Destination America. All right, you two, Doogie Porter, welcome back to WJZ. How are you this morning? Doing well. Doing great. How are you guys? Well, we're, we're, we're doing good. Okay, so let's just get right down to it. Friday night. Let's do it. The first ever exorcism live. Uh, do you even know what to expect? I was getting ready to say, well, what can the audience expect? But do you even know what to expect? We, we honestly don't. I mean, this is live TV. Um, we're getting into an area of this exorcism that we've never been in before. Um, we're just going to go in and do the same thing that uh, we do every week on Ghost Asylum. We're going to go in, respect, detect, and collect. And we're going to hand this over to uh, Chip Coffee and Bishop James Long, and we're going to let them do uh, what, what, what they're sent there to do, and that's to try to help this family out. And hopefully if there's anything in this house, hopefully they can get it out. This family living in this house, what have they been experiencing? Like, what have they described? You know, the family is, is that lives there, they're, they're kind of private. They don't want to be in, uh, you know, in the spotlight. Uh, they have not really disclosed a lot of what's going on in the house to us. Uh, they are, um, they're, they're about to have a child, and so their concern is, is that if there is something in the house, they want to try to make sure that it's, it's neutral, it's uh, flat. Uh, for when the new child gets there so that there's no issues that way. So that's why we're going in and trying to help them out too. Okay, so we're not talking about exercising demons from an individual, but rather from a house. <laughs> right, correct. Uh, if, uh, if you look at the different rites of exorcism, there is a solemn rite of exorcism, which is on a person, and a minor rite of exorcism, which is on a thing. And so what, uh, what's going to happen here, if it's warranted, as Diggy was saying, we're going to go in and look for paranormal activity. We're going to look for evidence that substantiates that something is going on. Uh, we're going to turn that over, of course, to Chip Coffee, the psychic medium. He's going to try to communicate and make contact through a seance with whatever's there. We're going to monitor him and look for anomalies. And then Bishop James Long, he's the, uh, he's the exorcist. And uh, if the exorcism is warranted on the house, then that's what you're going to see live on TV. Okay, now, if... if Audience, if you read these guys, if you if, if you read a Dugan Porter's uh, uh, a bios, they, they both come from, a, a, I would say, a, a deeply religious background. Uh, to be quite honest about it, you guys were raised to abide by the good book. But having mm -hmm. said that, somebody it, it's a, somebody's going to go in the words of the legendary Colonel Sherman Potter from the TV series Mash, horse hockey's. <laughs> What well, would you what would you, know, you say that, to them? Well, you know, we, we invite these people, the, the skeptics, um, because we're skeptical when we go into a place. Um, until you have something paranormal happen to you, you're not gonna believe it. And this house does have a creepy backstory. It inspired the movie The Exorcist. That is correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, there was uh, the movie was actually, you know, it shows that there was a little girl, Reagan. Uh, who was played by Linda Blair, but the uh, the real story is much stranger. I've had the opportunity to read uh, part of the diary that was kept by uh, Father uh, uh, William Baldwin uh, when uh, he was one of the priests or uh, who were the Jesuit priests who were performing the exorcism on uh, Roland Doe. Uh, he is uh, still alive and in, in in his 80s and and living peacefully and wants to stay that way. So uh, we're using that mm. uh, that name for him. But uh, you know this uh, this all started up in Maryland, and uh, and they were uh, they had some experiences there that uh, triggered them to uh, need to move or felt the need to move to St. Louis. And uh, Roland had an aunt who was uh, who was very uh, close to him that had passed away. And I think that when they got to St. Louis, they started trying to uh, use some of the. Uh, uh, supernatural stuff uh, that uh, she had uh, uh, kind of trained Roland in to uh, try to make contact back with her and I think that's what happened I think they they may have opened something up and and Roland uh, was just more susceptible to it Wow Wow All right, cool guys well listen Destination America and uh, you know good luck we'll see what comes down the pike and I'm sure we'll be talking to y'all again you always great guests we appreciate it all right, thank you. Thank you, guys. You know, you, you're from the D.C. area. You know the steps. In Georgetown. In Georgetown. I've still never walked up or down If you them. don't know about this, in the movie The Exorcist, mm -hmm. where they go, it's, it's right in Georgetown. Isn't it right on Pennsylvania? Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. Yeah, they're creepy to look at.